says, if, 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 you, if you recall, Rashi says that in Eretz Yisroel, um, it's called uh, the land, uh, uh, I forgot where Rashi says it, but Rashi says somewhere about Eretz Yisroel is called like the best land in the world because all the kings had palaces in Israel. It was like the place to have your, your palace. Everybody wanted to have a, their own place in, in Eretz Yisroel because it was so, so, um, and, and how many kings does Rashi say had their palaces in Eretz Yisroel? 31 kings. So from here we derive that the main empire, even though there are 70 nations, but the main empires of the world are 31. So when the Pasuk says, well, it really means I will give you all the 31 empires, which means I will give you the world in its entirety. And what does that mean? That the Jewish people will sanctify the entire world. And therefore, they will never leave. It won't be possible to leave Eretz Yisrael because the entire globe is going to be Eretz Yisrael. That's fulfilling the promise that I promised Avram Avinu. And here's the thing. And how is this going to be achieved? So now the next Pasuk says, how is it going to be achieved that we are going to uh, make the entire world holy and the entire world godly? When, which is in the end of days, this is going to happen. When, how are we going to reach this, this amazing revelation when the entire world is going to be transformed to Eretz Yisrael? And that's going to come because as the Rambam says, that in the end of days we're all going to do tshuva. And, the, and this next Pasuk, Pasuk Dalit, is hinting to, to the tshuva that Hashem is going to assist us in doing. It says in the Rambam, if ticha, Torah, the, the Torah promises that we're going to do tshuva. So that's the meaning of, the here, Beisi Ezaracha, I will increase your children. Increasing over here doesn't only mean increasing them, multiply them in terms of numbers, but the Beisi means I will make them big, I will make them great. How great will they become? They will become shining stars. Every single Jew will shine like a brilliant light of a star in the sky, and that's because we will be tzaddikim. As it says in the Pasuk, harabim, those who bring righteousness, who bring, who bring, uh, who affect the world to be righteous, to be, who affect the public, That's what it says. Are like the stars of heaven. So. That's the meaning of, I think that's what it says. Matzdike Harabim, give me just to, I'll be sure what the Pasuk is. I don't want to quote the Pasuk wrong. Matzdike Harabim, no, it doesn't say Kikoich Veshamam, Kikachavim. Those that are Matzdike Harabim are like stars. Which means that when we are in a righteous state, especially when we write, we cause other people to become righteous. So the tshuva that the Jewish people are going to do is going to lift them up to be like the, like, like, like the stars of the heaven and, and, and Hashem is going to help us to tshuva He's going to help us reach that state which that's going to cause the ge'ula to come and bring about so this is all really a promise for Mashiach and then v'nasati l'zaracha and that's the reason why I will give you he repeats it a second time it's called l'arotze se'el all the lands, all these lands again 31 lands, 31 countries 31 empires which means the entire world but then one will have the question what was the purpose of, of, of this taking so long? Why is this only going to happen in the end of days? Why is this only in the future? If Hashem loves Yitzchak, Avram Yitzchak, why couldn't he just do this immediately? So the Pasuk says, the, Hizbarach, the Pasuk explains why there was an exile to begin with. So we know the reason we, we the Jewish people went into the exile is because when we, the Jewish people, are scattered across the whole world, we rub off of our Jewishness and of our holiness and of our godly sensitivity into the rest of humanity. And then, like this, and, and that, in that sense, in a sense, it's, an, it's, it's, a, it's a Jewish conversion. We convert the entire world to become Jewish, not Jewish in the literal sense, but Jewish sensitive or Jewish thinking. And that's the meaning of the sages say that the only reason we went to exile is so that we can convert converts. And even though we know it's not a Jewish thing to seek to convert converts, so we learned many times that Rizal's explanation that it's referring to all the sparks of holiness, which means every entity of this world that we're able to uncover its spark and reveal its holy spark, which means its connection to God, which is what the Jewish people are tasked to do as a result of their observance of mitzvahs throughout the diaspora and across the four corners of the earth. And that's what redeems all the sparks, and that's what enables the entire world to become godly, which means, and that's called, that's called making converts. 
because we are including all that into our Jewishness. And ultimately, we can, as we said, and after we finish converting the, the world and everything that's in it, it also affects the lands, that the whole world becomes a Jewish land, reaches, it, it retains the sanctity of Eretz Yisrael. So that's the meaning of, and that's the reason why we're in exile. Now you could say, why do we have to be in exile? Why couldn't we, in a ready, in a very, in a, in a time, without going in exile, affect all of humanity to become transformed? The answer is a transformation that happens by someone imposing their ideas upon someone else is not a true internal transformation. It's a superimposed transformation. Even if you're being persuaded by, even when one person is persuaded by someone else's um, um, powerful, not, 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 not God forbid, in a, in a, in a, uh, through, a, through a coercion or some kind of a forcing, but you can also force your ideas upon someone else when it's so compelling that your, that your truths are so compelling, you force someone to acknowledge it. But that's not really that effect, but it's not deep because they on their own have not come to it. Because it's, it's, it's almost like you're, 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 you, it, there's a certain, um, certain kind of, of imposing and it's not real. The ultimate reality of something is when someone embraces something because they choose to do so, not because you're so compelling and you're compelling them to choose so. So that's why the Jewish people's effect on the world has to be in a very, in a very, um, uh, what is it called, covert way, in a very hidden way, where we, we spread out amongst the world, we're not, and we're not necessarily um, um, preaching to, 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 to the rest of humanity. We're doing it very quietly, just by living amongst the nations and, and um, d learning Torah and doing mitzvot and doing mitzvahs, we're unclogging the pores that, are, that, that, that keep the creation clogged and, 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 and which means including all the people in the world from being sensitive to holiness and godliness. When we unclog those pores and we allow the godly light to flow, it causes people to embrace holiness from within themselves, not from an outside, not because they're compelled. And I mean, he doesn't say all of this, but this I'm, I'm using some some uh, explanation that we get from Chabad Chassidus to explain his idea. And this is the idea why, so that, and that's why we have to do it in a concealed, in a in a in a more in a softer way. So that's the meaning of the his baruchu b'zaracham simply means they will bless themselves with your children. But the deeper meaning is this baruchu they will be grafted. The rest of humanity will become grafted. The converts will become grafted into your children. This baruchu, they will become grafted bizaracha into your children. Kol goyay aretz. In other words, not only will your Jewishness, will you be Jewish, but you will convert. You will, you will graft into the Jewish people um, the, the the those sparks of holiness that could be grafted and integrated into the Jewish into the Jewish world. But then there is one which includes literal converts as well. Even though we don't have that many, but still there are converts. But here's an amazing thing. Then the next Pasuk says, how long will this conversion be accepted? Meaning, when people want to convert and it are somehow there's something pulling them towards Judaism and they want to convert, how long is that conversion going to be acceptable? It's going to be acceptable only until Mashiach comes. It says after Mashiach arrives, uh, we will not accept any more converts. Because since it's going to be then at that time so good, so good, 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 good for Israel, so good for the Jewish people, it's going to be good for the whole world. It's going to be good for the Jewish people on a level that is beyond, 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 beyond. And therefore, those that are going to want to convert, you're not sure if they're doing it altruistically or they're doing it with selfish motive because, you know, it's good, now we want to join. So therefore, we say like this, only those who decided to convert when it was hard, when it was anti-Semitism, when Jews were persecuted, when Jews were... Being uh, where, 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 when there was all this, all this animosity and hatred, so that's the meaning of the last verse. Akev, those who who convert, who is going to be accepted in that conversion? Akev, those who are going to convert in the same manner. Ashasham Avram like Avram, listen to my voice. When Avram served God, Avram Avinu, he didn't do it with with um, with with um, for personal gain. Avram did it completely selflessly because as the Ramam says, the Ramam refers to Avram Avinu as the one who served God with love, because he did the truth because it's true, not because of anything personal to gain. So therefore we're saying that this conversion that is permitted is only during the time or only if it's done similar to Avram Avinu 
which is before Mashiach comes, but not after that. Okay, so this is amazing pirush from the Arpanei Moshe, where Hashem is st- telling Yitzchak, and again Yitzchak Davka, because Yitzchak's uh, dominance as one of our father is going to be in the time of Mashiach. Okay. Now, on this very last pasuk, Ekev Hashem Avram Bekoyli. Um, simple, simple mean. It's saying that because Avram Avinu listened to my voice. Now the pasuk says over here, Avram observed my observances, my mitzvahs, my statues, and my Torah. So Rashi says that Avram Avinu uh, actually kept all of Torah. Um, hold on one over here, as Rashi says it. Yeah, that. No, here the, Rashi doesn't say it explicitly over here. It just says that Rashi is explaining each one of these mitzvahs. That, that um, he, he kept the mitzvahs, the chukim, the Torah, Torah Shabbat Peh, Allah Chalom Hashem Sinai. Oh, but it, it says in the Gemara Masech this Yuma, it says, Kiyom Avram Avinu Kala Torah Kula, that Avram Avinu uh, um, observed the entire Torah. Shanamar, as it says, Eka Vashasham Avram Bakodli. We know that Avram kept the entire Torah. Now there's something very messianic about this idea that Avram kept the entire Torah. Because Avram wasn't commanded, the Torah wasn't given. So the question is, how did Avram Avinu know the entire Torah? In what sense did Avram Avinu know all of Torah? And the answer to that is, he had to know it on his own. It wasn't revealed to him, he knew it on his own. How did he know it on his own? So the Baal Shem Tov says, this is taken from the, there is a sefer called Baal Shem Tov Allah Torah. So he brings over, the, it's not the Baal Shem Tov's writing himself, but it's taken from a collection of all the places where the Baal Shem Tov is mentioned as a teaching on the Torah. So um, over there it says, he says, he explains like this, that really all of Torah mitzvahs doesn't have to be commanded. The reason they don't have to be commanded is because mitzvahs are called the channels of God. Orchai Savaya, mitzvahs are not just, you know, good deeds or things like that, or, or just commandments out of nowhere. The mitzvahs are the skeleton of all of existence. It's it's based on mitzvah observance that God molded and crafted the cosmos and all of existence. And in the spiritual worlds and the physical, everything is based on the observance of mitzvahs. So mitzvahs are the panemius of the panemius of, of creation and of all of existence and of course the panemius of the human being. As we say, kihem chayenu, they are life itself. So when a yid does a mitzvah, he's just allowing, when a Jew gives tzedakah, he's allowing the natural, true, godly f- flow to flow. If we're not observing mitzvahs, then we're causing chas, God forbid, we're shutting down that flow. We're not, we're not tuning in. We're not s- so basically, the real observance of mitzvahs is just to be synchronized with reality. With, the, with, with Hashem, Hashem designs Himself in His relationship to the world uh, in, the, in, 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 in the manner of 248 limbs, the 248 commandments, as the Zohar refers to the mitzvahs, 248 limbs of the king, and 365 arteries. So these are, this is reality. And therefore Avram Avinu didn't have to be commanded to do the mitzvah. By Avram Avinu just tapping in to the inner flow of life, he naturally did all the mitzvahs. So to him, for him not to do a mitzvah would be depriving himself from oxygen, depriving him from, very, from life, from his very existence. So good. That's Avram Avinu way back then. What does it have to do with me and you? So it says that when Mashiach will come, um, mitzvahs betela isla asid lavin. That there will come a certain time when there won't be any mitzvahs anymore. Simply, simply the way it's understood means that we won't do mitzvahs anymore. Mitzvahs will be stopped. The time of mitzvahs is only now. Now is the time of doing them. And tomorrow, we receive the reward. As if um, there is no observance of, of mitzvahs when Mashiach comes. But we know that can't be. Because we know the Torah will never be changed. And the mitzvahs are la adal and netzach netzach, and the mitzvahs are forever. So says the Rambam. And if that's the case, if the mitzvahs come to a stop, and more than that, if mitzvahs are eight, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Lubavitch Rebbe explains, if it's possible for mitzvahs to end at a certain time, is a sign that the mitzvah that God wanted, that means that if the mitzvah ends, means that at a certain point that Hashem wants this mitzvah, and then at a certain point God doesn't want the mitzvah anymore. If He wants it, then we have to continue doing it. Now, why would God stop wanting the mitzvah? Because there's no need for it. And so that would mean that the mitzvahs are here for a purpose, that, that they're not an end unto its own, they're a means to an end. They need to accomplish something, and therefore there is a mitzvah. We, however, know that what? That, that the mitzvahs are not a will 
an external will, where you want something because you want to achieve something, but a mitzvah are essential will. It's something that God wants because He wants, not bec- for no reason. It's just, it just, this is His essential will, and He wants it because He wants it. Such a type of a will can never end, because you don't, the will is not contingent on some kind of a result. You don't want a result, you want this itself. So, and that's showing how deep the mitzvahs are totally one with God. And therefore, it can, just like God can, never ends, the mitzvahs are eternal. They're forever. If so, what do we mean, mitzvahs betelois la'asid lavoi? That the mitzvahs are bottle. The answer is, it's not that we're going to stop doing mitzvahs. We're always going to do mitzvahs. But at a certain point, we're going to start doing mitzvahs like Avram Avinu. Since when Mashiach comes, that your teacher, which is God, is not going to hide from you anymore. Hashem is not going to be concealed. Hashem is not going to be obscured. Hashem is not going to be anymore in a state of, of that means that there will be, the world will be completely openly unified with God. And as I explained earlier, the Baal Shem Tev is saying that the mitzvahs are just the, it, and again, it's not that God wants the mitzvahs because of the world. This, this is his essential will. But then he created a world to express his desire in mitzvahs. So, but, 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 but the bottom line is that the world derives its energy from the mitzvahs. The world and everything in it, including us humans. So when Mashiach comes, it will come a certain point that we don't need the commandment. It's not a commandment, it's just our natural being. We're expressing who we are, which is expressing who God is. And it's all, it's all an expression of that essential expression of Torah and mitzvahs. And that's the idea. So that's why the way Avram did mitzvahs, says the Baal Shem Tov, so it will be the observance of mitzvahs after Mashiach comes for all of the Jewish people. The Priya Aretz, Remendel of Vitebsker, again from the great Hasidic master, who was the first who made Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael, was the first wave of Hasidim, second wave actually. He came up and settled in Tzvas. He was a Rebbe, he was one of the teachers of the Alter Rebbe, Pernir Zalman of Liadi, after the Maggid passed away. In any case, so in the Sefer Priya Aretz, he, he develops further this, this idea. And uh, this, this concept, he asks, he asks a question like this. It says, Avram Avinu kept all the commandments. Here it says, Mitzvah and my mitzvahs, Chukai and my statues as well. So he says, I can understand how Avram Avinu did the mitzvahs without being commanded, because the mitzvahs have reason. They're all mitzvahs that all have an explanation. Because that's what mitzvahs means, commandments that you have some kind of a rationale, some kind of a logic. So Avram, we, we, we can't figure out God's mind, but because Avram was uh, so high and so, so spiritual and so godly, he was able to figure out the commandments without him being told. But the chukim, which are statues which are beyond reason, how is it that Avram Avinu was able to do those chukim without him being told? So the way he explains it is that it says by Parah Duma that Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu that even though uh, the, 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 the Parah Duma, the red heifer, is a, is a chukah, is a statue beyond reason, but it says to Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem says to you, I will reveal, I will reveal the reason of Parah Duma, of the red heifer. So there is, so how can he be revealed to him? So he explains because really that too has a reason. Now, Emesis, Chesidus Chabad, and many Mamarim discuss, and this is again a very, very, very recurring theme, that really all mitzvahs are God's will beyond reason. Beyond any possible reason. It's just His essential will. But there is also in the very same Chesidus that it explains that on a very, 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 very deep level, all mitzvahs, including Chukim, have reason. When we talk about reason, we're talking about different levels. Not, not logical reason, but reason of pleasure taste, a sensation. Like Tom doesn't only mean reason, logic reason, also when you taste something and it's just a thrill, it's an oneg, a pleasure. So mitzvahs all have an oneg. Every mitzvah has a pleasure. And that can be considered the reason of the mitzvah. And here it goes, it, it, it's actually layer upon layers. And then we say there's a level deeper than that which is even beyond that, that, that sensation. It just is a very, very essential thing. Again, it's, it, it's, it's a very complicated idea. But one thing is for sure, we say that, when we say that, that there are mitzvahs that don't have any reason, there is a, 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 a level higher than that. There is a level higher than that where there is reason. And, and that's what he says, so he says like this. He says, for people 
who are so in tune with the divine, for people that are so powerfully synchronized with God, so for them, like Moshe Rabbeinu, for them, they can sense the reason in the chukim as well. And that's why for them, the chukim are mitzvahs. They're not chukim. Because just like mitzvah has a reason, there is a reason. But he says, for which people does the chukim become a mitzvah? Does the chukim become a mitzvah? Now, who can be so intimate with God to experience God's sensation in a mitzvah that it doesn't have to be a just a, a, a statue, do it because I say, but can actually sense the pleasure in the mitzvah, in the chayk, and therefore the chayk is a mitzvah. It's only for people who at the lower end, at the lower end also um, experience the do the do do the um, mitzvahs in a manner of mitzvah, not in a manner of chayk. What do we mean by that? What he means is there are certain commandments which the Torah commands us not to do, which are really not they're, they're negative things. We can all appreciate that they're 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 negative, they're bad. So the Torah gives us a whole list of do's and don'ts, and many of them are really, really not nice things. Like the Torah says, do not steal. The Torah says do not be cruel, right? The Torah says do not right, don't hate your brother in your heart. Things like that. So there are, are, are or certain things the Torah says are despicable. They're just yucky, and they're against God's will. And not just because, and they're not just despicable because they're against God's will. They just are not. They're very ugly. Now, for a lot of people, um, even though it's ugly, but we all have, but we have yates. Not for a lot of people. For most people, almost everybody, we have yates or hara. So a lot of times, things that are ugly and negative and coarse and vulgar a person would have an appetite to do them. And the reason he or she abstains from doing them is because God commanded. So they're holding back from that. So he says people that are on that level, which means that they need the commandments to hold them back, to, to ref- cause them to refrain from doing things that are, 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 uh, are, should, be, should be repulsed by us, should be abhorrent, but yet they still have a desire. So those people definitely cannot reach a point where they transcend mitzvahs at the upper end, where the chukim become mitzvahs for them. Because obviously they're still in a real state of chas v'shalom, of disconnect. Says, those people who don't need a mitzvah for the observance of, that means they have so purified themselves internally that every, every, every negative thing that Torah calls negative, they have no desire for, which means they can transform their Yetzirah at home. Like David HaMelech, Libi Chalal Bekirbi, my heart is clean, my heart is empty inside of me. So for them, those mitzvahs stop being mitzvahs. They don't have to be a commandment. They just naturally are synchronized with, with, with godliness, with Torah and with holiness. So for those, for those people, the chukim at the very top, which are again such lofty and, and, and beyond things that no one can grasp, they can grasp those as well. So they can turn the chukim into mitzvahs at the top. So he, therefore he says, therefore he says, that at the end of days, here, yeah, hold on. That's why he says that mit, the mitzvahs will be nullified when Mashiach will come. Because once we're going to reach a time when Kimola or its day as Hashem, when the world is going to be filled with godly knowledge, so what's going to happen is we're going to get a new Torah. In what sense are we going to have a new Torah? Because as the chukim are going to become mitzvahs, because in that sense we're going to sense the even those statues, because as we are elevated, as there is a refinement from the from the from the from the human condition. And we go into such a state of refinement that we don't have to be commanded not, commanded not to steal ever or not to cheat or not to do anything. Right? Well, once we don't have to be commanded in that, then there is an, an, an Amola Adetz Deus Hashem, the world becomes filled with knowledge of God and we get so intimate with Hashem that our, that, that, that which is a, a choik, which means something that doesn't have a reason, we can sense God's sensation in it. And he says, and so far so, that we continue going higher and higher and higher until, in a sense, we reach a point that there is no mitzvahs at all 
because there's only one mitzvah. And what's that mitzvah? Anoichi Hashem Elokecha, I am God, your God. And now, now and, and let's, I mean, he says it very, again, he speaks, in, he speaks very cryptic. He says, we come to a point where the wings of mitzvahs, says that the angels have wings and they fly and they soar, which mitzvahs are called wings, those, mit, those wings are, were so nullified in front of God that those, all the wings of observance of mitzvahs are come to rest because we experience the pinimius of all the mitzvahs, which is anoichi, which is I am God. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean, as I, as I appreciate it, that the, as I understand it, it doesn't mean that there is no more observance. We're always going to be doing all the mitzvahs, but we're going to do it, at all the 613 mitzvahs is going to be observed in a manner where it's only one essence, it's one reality. It's the MS of God, that's what it is. We're going to sense the anoichi. We're not going to sense the details. It's like, you know, and when you speak to a person, you know, even though they have fingers and they have all their different limbs and organs, but when you're talking to them, you know, if you're looking at their nose or at their ear and you're noticing an ear or a nose, you're not talking to them. It's when, you, when you're encountering the entire human being. So then even if you happen to be talking to them and looking down at their fingers, it's not the finger that you're looking at. You're looking at the person that's expressing himself in the 248 limbs. So that's the idea. When Mashiach comes and reach that point where it's all anoichi, it's all just Abish, there, it's just God. And that's what all mitzvahs are. That's the ultimate observance of mitzvahs, similar to Avram Avinu, Ekev HaShasham Avram Bekoili. Okay. I'd like to conclude today with one very special teaching. Very, very special teaching that got me very excited. Again, on this pasuk of Ekev HaShasham Avram Bekoili. From the great and saintly Redomsk Rebbe, Reb Shleim of Redomsk. And he explains that when we say, now we spoke that Ekev HaShasham Avram Bekoili is referring to Avram's observance during, which, during his lifetime, which is again in a messianic state because Avram Avinu doesn't have to be commanded. His observance of mitzvahs is natural to him, like it's going to be, and we're all going to be like Avram Avinu after Mashiach comes in the time of mitzvahs betelos liyas. But here's another pirush. That Ekev HaShashama Avram Bekoili means that Avram Avinu's all of his observance, Yishmar Mishmarti, was to accomplish one thing. Ekev, to affect the occurrences that are going to happen in the world, Ekev, at the last moments of time, which is right now. In other words, what Avram's concern was, more than anything else, was to pick up the Shekhinah from the ground. To raise the Shekhinah from the earth. That was all of his avoda, And that's what it means. Ekev, that Avram's Yishmar Mishmarti, everything he did, his mind and his thoughts and his aspirations and all of his desire was only, as he uses the words, Lahakim Shekhinah Ma'afra, to raise the Shekhinah from the earth. And he explains it so beautifully. Just to explain this idea, which is what we're taught in Chassidus, the Rebbe has been teaching us all the time, that we can't for one second be distracted from our avoda. or we want Mashiach now to stop already the pain and suffering that there is throughout the world. So where do we see that? So he explains like this. There's a, he brings that, there's a pasuk, that's a famous pasuk in Eishas Chayel, Vatishak liyoyim acharoyim. Oiz vahadar levusha, strength and, and, and splendor is her garment. Vatishak, and she causes rejoicing, liyoyim achroin, simply means vatishak, and she laughs, liyoyim achroin, in the end of time, in the last day, in the end of days, she laughs. But the deeper meaning. Oiz vahadar levusha is referring to Knesset Yisrael, the Jewish people, where, where are we garb ourselves with strength and splendor. Vatishak, and we bring laughter to Hashem. Because by revealing to Hashem, that there will be a day when God will be happy. In other words, we make Hashem happy by, by constantly comforting God that the Giyul, that Mashiach is coming. And he brings the Apostle, we say, we say it in Haidu. It says, Basru miyoyim el yoyim Yeshu Asai. Basru simply means, Basru means from the word Besura. Besura means news give over a report basru bring a report miyom liyom from day to day Yeshua asai his salvation that means tell god every day that another day passed and another day passed and we're a day closer Yeshua asai for the abishter to have his yeshua his redemption because he brings an interesting thing he says all the great sadikim the greatest of the great from way back, way back when, saw this long, miserable exile. 
they foresaw this and with a prophetic vision, with the Ruach HaKodesh. They saw it way back then, that the, of the great long duration of time. As he brings from the, the Zohar, the Reb Shimon Bayachayu was crying, and he says, Vai, how, how, how painful it is. The Galusa is smashach kula hai, that the Golos goes on and on and on and on. And in accordance to the how much it pained them, the pain of the redemption, Hashem showed them, the tzaddikim, the tremendous joy that, that comes for the Gil. In other words, they had a glimpse of the ultimate Yeshua, of the, of the greatest happiness and joy, and it was equivalent to how much pain they felt for the pain of the Shekhinah, to that degree, commensurate with that. And then what do they do with, their, with that vision that they have? They bring that information back to God to give the Eberster and Nechama that, you know, it's going to get good. So he brings from what it says in Sefer Eimek HaMelech, a Kabbalah Sefer, in the name of Rabbi Avram HaLevi. Rabbi Avram HaLevi was one of the Talmidim of the Arizal, one of the great Kabbalists. That he once saw the image of a, of a, of a woman in, in, in mourning, and her, 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 she was dressed like a warner, uh, uh, like, a, like, a, like a mourner, and he saw her in, in tremendous pain. And this image, of course, was the Shekhinah that he, that he beheld. And he saw, but then, and he, and he was in horrible pain from seeing her that way, and immediately he saw her change her clothing as she's dressed in her kala and her bride clothing. He saw in her in a comforted clothing. So, in other words, as soon as he experienced the pain for her, she suddenly turned around and he, he saw her in her in her in her days of splendor. So this is the meaning as he explains, Basru tell the Abish to Tvasru Lashem Yuzbarach. Give God the Basura that any day, Yoim Li Yoim, as every day passes, it's a day closer to Mashiach. And then Hashem is going to be happy. Because Hashem hadn't had one happy day yet. Because the Pasuk says, Yisma Hashem b'maisav. Hashem will rejoice in His creation in His world. It doesn't say samach, that he, that, he, that, he, that he was happy, but He will be happy. And that's the meaning of vatishak, that Hashem's wife, the Jewish people, bring Him joy, bring Him laughter, by telling Him, reminding Him, that the good days are coming. Yom Acharon of the end of days. And he says an interesting thing. He says that was all hinted to. You see, you see there was a certain tzaddikim that you can see were so pained of the Golos of Shechina. And I think I actually said this, this piece to you in Parshas Lech Lecha from the Tver Shleimer, but it's worth repeating it again. And not, not, not I think, I, I remember now that we did it in one of the Amr Sheikh Maris classes. So he says in there that, 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 that in, in Parshas Lech Lecha, Describes an amazing thing. He says that when the Abishter sent Avram Avinu, it was for this purpose. Hashem took Avram Avinu and sent him to the land. Which land? The land of Canaan. He says the Canaanim represent, Hashem wanted to show Avram Avinu the horrific denigration of the world that doesn't know its creator. A world devoid of divine recognition. And that's the meaning, Ha'aretz Asherah Reka. I'm going to show you an, a, 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 a world that's so aretz stake, that's so materialistic, a world that people are so absorbed in their material pursuits and in the physical delights and not paying attention at all to the master, to the creator who created it all. Right? And that's the meaning of the, when Hashem told Avram to go, it says, Va'aknani az ba'aretz. Kanani is an indication for all the negative uh, traits, character traits. Now, um, how much did it pain Avram Avinu? Because Avram Avinu does recognize his creator, and he comes into a land, and what does he see? He sees people that are so detached, so disconnected. And that's the, the, the deeper meaning of, now why is Hashem doing this? Because uh, Hashem wants to show Avram the pain, so Avram can pain himself for it, and again, every time we participate in that pain, we help the rebuilding happen. So that's what happened. Hashem took Avram. It says, Vayaver Avram ba'aretz. It says, Avram crossed through the land. Ad makoim Shechem. So he says in these words over here, to the place of Shechem. Shechem is Rosh Hatevis. Shein kavoid malchuso. The, the name of his glorious kingdom. So Avram comes to a place where the name of his glorious kingdom is present, but yet unrecognized. No one is recognizing. How do you see that Shechem 
is shame kavoid machusoi, but no one is respecting his 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 kingdom, because the next words are ad alone more to alone more. He says alone more is hinting to a very very powerful secret. Alone, he says, is gematria elokim. The word alone is a gematria elokim. So it's showing on the time of exile, the time of darkness, when the name of Elohim, which the name of Elohim is concealment, Elohim is gematria hateva, where the world looks to be just natural and you don't see godliness on it, and so on and so forth. So that's Elohim alone. And more comes from the word mar vavke. That the vavke, the vav, and the hey of Hashem, which are, is the godliness that is present within the world, the yutke, is Olam Haba, the future world. The Vavke is the power of this world, and it's mar, it's bitter, because during the time of the domain of Elohim, of concealment, there is a mar, there's a tremendous bitterness in the Vavke, because the Yudke, the Yud and the He, are not flowing in the Vavke, because as we learned many times, that a Molek makes a block, Molek means he cuts off, he's disconnecting between Yudke and Vavke, as it says, Ein Hashem. Mar, is also gematria 240, the exact gematria of Amalek. So who is causing bitterness to the Vavke? It's because the world is still dominated by the Amalek, Amaleki forces, who cut God off from the world, which is, therefore, it's alone, it's all under the name of Elohim, not the name of Yudke Vavke. There's katnas amochen, there's constrictedness in the world. And, and what is it? Nebach, Shem Kavod Malchus, the Shekhinah Malchus is stuck in that darkness. And when Avram Avinu saw that, Avram felt tremendous empathy and for the Shekhinah. But when a Mashiach is going to come, what's going to happen? The Yudke is going to flow into the Vavke, so it's going to be Yia, Yudke, Yudke. And then Mar is going to change to Ram. Ram al Kogoyam Hashem. It's going to be exalted, the Abish Disney. And that's why. What does it say immediately after Avram Avinu came to Shechem? What does the Pasuk say? Immediately it says, Vayera Elav Hashem, that Hashem appears to him. And he says to him, I will give your children, which is referring to Mashiach. Your children ultimately having the land is referring to the land being given to us, not in the days by Moshe Rabbeinu, because then we didn't really take the full possession of the land when Mashiach comes. In other words, as soon as Avram perceived the pain and the suffering of the, of the long duration of time when the Yudke and Vavke are separated, when it's Mar Vavke, when it's bitter the Vavke, when Amalek dominates in the world. So as Avram empathized and felt tremendous pain for the Shekhinah, so immediately what happens then? Vayeda Elav Hashem, to your children I will give it. In other words, you have a moment of Giyula. And then he explains that's the meaning of Ekev HaShashom Avram Bekoili. That Avram's entire Avaidah was all Akev to affect the end of days, to bring about the end of, 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 of the exile and the end of the suffering. Then he also explains an, an amazing thing you find that David Amelech, he explains some psukim, there's beautiful. David Amelech says in the end of chapter in Psalm 104, Kuv Dalet, David Amelech says these words Yerav Olav Sichi, may it be pleasant to him my words. Anoichi esmach b'ashem, I will rejoice in God. Simply it means I will rejoice in God. The deeper meaning is, let it be pleasant to God, and I will, anoichi esmach b'ashem, I will bring simcha to God. I will make him happy. How is David HaMelech making Hashem happy? So he says like this, David HaMelech has almost fin finished the entire book of Tehillim. Especially in, per in chapter 104, where David HaMelech is speaking all the praises of God, the famous Baruch Nafshi, when he speaks about the beauty of God in creation, all the miracles, all, the, all the, sp the, the spectacular forces of nature. It's all discussed in the Baruch Nafshi. My soul sings to you. But he says, imagine coming to a king when the king is in prison, and you're speaking to him and praising him about all of this magnificent splendor of his empire. But the king is in, is, is in prison. As long as the king is in prison, he can't derive any pleasure from the fact that you're praising him from all of his magnificent, from his magnificent uh, 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 empire and all of his beautiful things. Because what it, but he's in prison, he's suffering. The only thing you can comfort him in is that you're telling him that you know what, very soon we're getting you out of here. It's over. That that makes him happy. 
So when David HaMelech finishes saying all of the healing, when he finishes Baruch Nafshi, he says like this, it's nice, Yerav Olaf Sichi, when is it going to be pleasant to him, all my words that I said till now? Anoichi Esmach Bashem, when I will make God happy, and how will I make God happy? What's the next words? Yitamu Chatoyim in Aretz, when the sinners will be removed from the land, and as the sages say, it doesn't mean that the sinners will be killed, it means the sinners will do tshuva. The sins will remove from the land, and, and they... And there aren't any more wicked to keep God in prison. Then, then I will be bring joy. Then that's the ultimate joy for Hashem. That's where the simcha lies by bringing God news that Mashiach is coming. And he says it's also hinted to one more thing. In this week, in Parshas told us also. It says, V'yodoy oichezez ba'akev Esav, talking about Yaakov Avinu, where it says his hand is holding on to Esav's heel. So the Tzferish Lema says, Yud, Yodoy, his hand, also can be re- read V'yudoy, and his Yud. Yud, he says, it represents the power of thought. Because we know that um, Yud Kevavke, when we said earlier, Olam Abba, which is a world of thought, is created from the Yud of Hashem's name. Olam Azah is created with the He. So thought is, is Yud. So Yod Doi means where is Yaakov's thought? Yod Doi, where is Yaakov's Yud? Oichezes, it's where is he holding on to his entire Avoda? By cave Esau, at the, at the heel of Esau, to flip Esau over, it's in order to bring Mashiach, to remove the power of Esau in the world, which is a power that dominates until Mashiach comes to eventually flip Esau over, and then it's going to be the ultimate that the Abish to finally will be redeemed from prison. And that has been, so he says, that has been all the longing of Yaakov, that has been all the longing of David HaMelech, and that has all been all the longing of the Avod of Avram Avinu, and of all the tzaddikim who can't sit still for one moment without, without thinking about the pain of the Shekhinah and, and, and crying for the end of all of that and for the final redemption to happen. May we merit to see that now, now, and now. Second, we shut the recording here.